James Blake has been a huge part of Travis Scott's last two albums, but why exactly does Travis love his production? Let's start by listening to one of their most recent tracks together, Lost Forever. Lost on Alice, driven in both cars. Just bring your girl, feel like she both fast. At the beginning of his career, James used to take Lil Wayne acapellas and remix them. Taking a song like A Millie by Lil Wayne. You might be thinking, why are you telling me this? The reason is, it brings us perfectly to James's first production technique, reharmonizing. Now it's these chords with all these different inversions that you wouldn't expect under that vocal, recontextualizing it, reharmonizing it, and turning it into something new. This trick is used on Lost Forever, where James lays multiple samples on top of each other. First is Chuck Semrick's Don't Be So Nice. Have you ever been lost? And second is a small excerpt from James's own song, Forever. Don't use the word forever. You first need a main sample. I used sampler.io and set some criteria, including the scale and genres. Eventually, I came across this. I brought it into FL and began chopping it. The main thing to look for is a chop with a minor chord that can be looped, something like this. However, just repeating that for the whole song would be boring. So I found a section that adds something new and use that to transition into another minor chord chop. Next, we need to layer another sample on top. When I stumbled across this, I knew it was the one. Just like James Blake's Forever sample, this song has a completely different vibe to the main sample we used. However, after isolating the vocals and finding the perfect space for it, it sounds like this. On top of that, I also isolated the drums from the sample and used that as a percussive layer. To finish it off, I added a couple of synth layers similar to what you can hear on Lost Forever. First is this reverse lead at the end of the loop. And finally are these two accents from Synth Diaries. If you guys want sounds like this, I'm doing a huge Black Friday sale, 50% off all my kits. This is the cheapest they'll ever be. Hit the link in the description. Next, we're going to look at how James Blake turned these sample chops into a beat for Travis to rap over. First is a synth bass as well as a kick. Then I added a tom which acts as a snare. That's super simple, so I thought I'd add a metro style switch up who's also a frequent collaborator of James Blake. They work together on Mile High and the drums are infectious. We on a drive loop then, to see ride, loop then. First I added a simple clap and snare. Then we have a hi-hat and open hat. before finally adding a distorted 808. Now we've seen how James Blake directly produces for Travis, but let's uncover some techniques that made his music stand out to Travis in the first place. Here's a song from his 2011 self-titled album. A lot of James's tracks are like this, the raw emotion of a piano and vocals that sound like they were recorded together at the same time with one mic. To make something similar, I first laid down these chords. James Blake can make chord progressions like this because he can play multiple instruments and has a great knowledge of music theory. So if you want to learn either of those yourself, then luckily I have something that will change the way you make music. Introducing Skillshare. The first 500 people to use my link will get access to one of Skillshare's best offers, a completely free 30 day trial, meaning you have nothing to lose. Not only are there a variety of music production courses, there's a bunch of other resources that you can use as a producer too. For example, classes in marketing and entrepreneurship can help you turn your hobby of music production into a career. I've 
I've been taking the Ultimate Gospel Piano course by Kingsley B and Krumah, and that's massively helped me improve my music theory and piano skills. Don't forget, no goal is too small. If you want to become an expert at music theory, even learning one chord progression is progress, and the teachers on Skillshare can help you get there one step at a time. As I said earlier, if you want to level up your production, the first 500 people to sign up with the link in the description will get a free 30-day trial. I then process them with a compressor and portal. However, I automated the portal so it comes in during the empty spaces, giving a more electronic feeling. After that, I went back to his reharmonizing technique by adding in these vocals I made on a completely different sample, something inspired by a track from James Blake's latest album. First, I added lots of effects, including reverbs, EQs, compressors, and sidechain effects. Then I bounced it to audio and reversed it before chopping and placing it in a new order. I also added the original vocal back in. The technique I use for the next element is another staple of James Blake's arsenal. He often starts by recording a bunch of ideas on his synths, pure creativity without the limitation of an 8 bar loop. To test this out, I pressed record and played in a bunch of different textures and melodies before going through them afterwards and choosing the best parts. And the final layer I added is a synth pad playing the same chords as the piano. To bring it all together, I added three plugins on my master channel. First, a room reverb, because as I mentioned earlier, James often records piano and vocals using the same mic in one room, so using this plugin gives a similar feeling. I also added compression and a pitch shifter. And for the final part of the video, I wanted to better understand some of James's drum techniques. To do this, I took inspiration from his song, Assume Form. First, I added a rim and two hi-hats, which are shifted back different amounts to give a really nice textural sound. Then we have the most interesting part, the percussion. On assumed form, Jamie uses some weird electronic percussion that again contrasts the smooth hi-hats. To do something similar, I clicked in a perk loop with these sounds and then added a shaper box as well as some reverb and EQ to create a unique bounce. Finally, to finish it all off, James mentioned in an interview how he uses Arturia's Stage 73 plugin to add percussion to his beats. He boosts the hammer sounds, giving a crazy texture, so I did something similar, leaving us with this. Mm -hmm. 